The annual pace of inflation rose in April for the first time since its peak last June, according to Statistics Canada. The agency is reporting that inflation rose 4.4 percent in April, in part because of a 28.5 percent jump in mortgage costs. The consumer price index was up 4.4 percent compared with a year ago, up from a year-over-year increase of 4.3 percent in March. And Canadians may be feeling the increase in inflation, as StatsCan is reporting that the cost of rent has risen 6.1 percent from a year ago. Meanwhile, groceries are up 9.1 percent. Well, joining us now to further discuss the impact of these numbers, Numbers is Dr. Moshe Lander, economist and professor at Concordia University. Dr. Lander, welcome back to Forum Daily. Hello. So, as we mentioned, this is the first increase in inflation since last June. Uh, what were found? What were the main causes found behind this reading? It's exactly the items that you said, and it's been the culprits all along. We're talking about rent, we're talking about energy, and we're talking about food. So. Uh, they've been the things that have consistently been above average. They are uh, still above average, and, and they're pulling the numbers a little bit higher than what was expected. And we know financial analysts were expecting the inflation rate to be lower, coming in at 4.1 percent, but it rose to 4.4 percent. So how are economists reacting to this increase? Calmly. Uh, and I think that's the way that all of us should be taking it. The difference between 4.1 and 4.4 is really small. I, I know we can do the math and say that that's 0.3 percentage points. But the fact is that the trend is still clear. It's come down from 8.1. It's supposed to be down to three soon enough. Uh, this is just a blip on the way. Oh, and on that note, we mentioned the Bank of Canada expects inflation to settle at around 3% this summer. And uh, are we still heading in that direction, Dr. Lander? In the direction, yes. I never really believed the Bank of Canada, not to say that their credibility is at stake here, but I thought that the 3% target was a little optimistic uh, to hit this summer. But certainly by the fall, the end of this calendar year, we should be at that 3%, and we should enter into the 2% range uh, early in 2024. I don't think that this number is going to change that, uh, that, that path any. So what do these numbers mean for the Bank of Canada's push to control inflation, and I guess more importantly, its interest rate pause? So I don't think that we're going to see a change in their behavior here. The Bank of Canada meets in a couple of weeks. They're probably going to keep interest rates on hold. They're going to say that they're going to continue to watch what's going on. Uh, they're going to ask us to be vigilant. They're going to be nervous about things like PSAC strikes and possible WestJet strikes among the pilots and what that could mean for wage inflation. Uh, but assuming that nothing surprising comes up, they're, they're okay with this. Nobody said that it was going to be a smooth run from 8.1 down to 2.0. All right, Dr. Lander, so is there any chance of any more interest rate, rate hikes on the horizon? And if so, uh, what could they potentially look like? There's always a chance that interest rates could go up. So nobody should uh, rest easy. Uh, but it's very unlikely. If it were to happen, it's probably 25 basis points. It's if, let's say, that next month's number is, say, also 4 point something percent, uh, if we see that these unions are flexing their muscle and they're negotiating above average wage increases, then the bank might need to nudge that interest rate just to say, hey, I told you uh, we're trying to bring inflation down here and you're not doing your part. But uh, if we don't see any sort of big jump, if we see that this is just a blip, the Bank of Canada probably doesn't need to do anything. And taking all these uh, stipulations into account, uh, what is the likeliness of inflation continuing to increase uh, if no steps are taken by the Bank of Canada just yet? So the underlying causes are kind of one-offs here. That 28.5% jump that you said uh, in mortgages or in housing costs, uh, you know, that's a lot of people when they reset their mortgage, they're going to go from half a percentage point to five percentage points on their mortgage. But that's a one-off. And so once they've done it, they're locked in for the next three years, five years, and so they're not going to see any sort of inflation anymore. So, uh, you know, the, the trend is still down. This is just a blip. Uh, and I think that these one-offs that are driving it this month are, are not going to be one-offs next month. And for a, a bit of a broader perspective, what could this mean for the Canadian economy overall, these numbers? You know, every time that you and I talk, uh, the word that we keep using is resilient. Uh, the economy just keeps managing to chug along. Uh, you know, we might see a recession, but I've, I've said since last year that if we do have a recession this year, it'll be very mild, it would be very short. And the fact is that here we are uh, entering into the middle of 2023, and we're not in a recession yet. So, uh, you know, if there is an economic downturn coming, if there is something that's going to tip the economy, again, th there's a little bit of space here to negotiate. The labor market's still strong and, and doing well. Uh, I, I, I don't see that there's any real concerns for the economy at this point. All right, Dr. Lander, thank you again for joining us today on Forum Daily.
Anytime.